Hello, I'm Alec Newman. I'm playing uh, Paul Atreides in Dune, the miniseries. And this, behind you, is a thopter. To give it its full and proper name, it's an ornithopter. Now, this thopter is the very same thopter that uh, Paul and Jessica use to escape from the Harkonnen when they're in the siege with Duncan Idaho. It's after uh, the Atreides Palace has been invaded by those very same evil, nasty, fat, sweaty Harkonnen. Um, and it also features in a lot of the story plush leather interior, CD, everything, the works. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's really a, a very human story. It has, and it has all the elements of you know, the human world. It has, it's about, as well as this, this, this boy and this family and, and this amazing environment, which is really exciting visually as well as anything else. It's about religion, it's about politics, um, about social order. There's, there's a big discussion, there's a debate really in it about, you know, morality and all those kind of things. And they're really well, um, well, um, you know, discussed if you like, in, in the book and, and thankfully in, in John Harrison's script as well. So you're dealing with, although it's set at 10,191, you're really dealing with something that to me might as well be set in the past. It does have a, to me it has a, a very religious slant, um, which gives it a kind of epic biblical feel, which I think is why it feels as much history as it is set in the future. Paul Atreides, to me, um, the number one thing that he is, is a human being. There is so much else going on, that the, the, the fact that he may or may not be this Kwisatz Haderach thing, uh, is, you know, Moadib, the Mahdi, all this great stuff. But actually, um, he spends a lot of time in the story, for me, um, reacting in an extremely human way to all those things. Reacts with fear. Um, trepidation, doubt, disbelief, all those things that um, if you or I were told that we were the new messiah, that's what we would react with. And then of course there's a very slow realization that, uh, in, in terms of what he is and what, what his destiny um, has chosen for him. But he does realize that very slowly and again I think that's a very human thing. It doesn't, there's, there's no one pop point in the story. He spends a lot of time resisting his destiny. Um, until he realizes that he has to do what he has to do and he actually is this, you know, messiah-like figure. But even then, I'm still convinced that at the end of the story, there is even a tiny little shadow of doubt and fear because the bottom line is that he's a human being. The first thing that hit me in a big way about John, even from the very first meeting that I had with him, he really, really does have an enormous passion for this project, both for the book and then for his, what he knows is a brilliantly faithful adaptation of that novel. Um, and to get through as many stumbling blocks as John has had to go through, you've really, really got to want to do it. Um, you know, and he really has done that. And still, um, after however many weeks of shooting, He's still there on the button every day creating ideas because he's really excited about his project. Um, the great thing for him working with John on the set is his imagination. You know, if, I, mean, I, I really trust him. So if you can, he sort of takes you with him on this kind of, um, try not to say voyage of discovery, but that always sounds good. No, he takes you with him on this sort of trip of his imagination. And um, it's just a joy to work with. I mean, and to talk with, and, and great for the actors. Um, very much an actor's director, as well as everything else. Always, always there. He won't let you go if you don't feel comfortable, you know. Um, but he manages this extraordinary balance of all, of all the departments and manages to keep everybody happy. But his imagination and his passion for the, for the story and the people in it are the, are the two things I would say are his real great gift.